process timeline. So I know that everybody's been saving the world here and uh, <laughs> saving, at least saving Fesden. Um, and I know you've all been up late thinking about this problem right here <laughs> as a sideline of, of all of your, your thoughts. Um, this is very, very, very simplified. But I'll give you a little, in listening to everybody, I'll give you a little historical perspective here that does tie into some things that we're discussing. And actually, my whole presentation comes out of a discussion with Kurt, um, where uh, you'll see at the end, uh, my initial thought of what I was going to do here took a whole different turn by sort of the research and development and the discussions that came out. But it was a good example of where kids start out with a problem, um, and they start working on it, and they have this great idea. And when <coughs> it comes to the end, it's a whole different thing or a whole different solution that's simpler, cheaper, and hopefully more useful. So that's, that's basically where we come from. Um, most of you, all of you know that a couple years ago we built two uh, eco-friendly uh, turf fields with cork and coconut and all kinds of things you could probably eat or in our field, and we are the place to be. Everybody raves about our fields. I get, I field maybe three emails or phone calls a week from people saying, can I talk to you about your field? We are looking at putting one in, in our place. And along with that eco-friendly uh, design process, we put in two scoreboards. We only had one scoreboard before in the old football field, which was the old fashioned bulbs in it. I had to dig my way through the bushes that surrounded that scoreboard to turn the power on, like you know Frankenstein, you know, throw this lever uh, thing to get it to fire up. So our scoreboards are solar powered and they are wireless now. And so with that um, comes this controller with a battery pack. The battery pack being that black thing on the side that we plug in in the cage. And I take those two things out for every game, sometimes two of them, because we have a football game and a soccer game or two lacrosse games going on. You plug the battery pack in the controller. I hit the switch on the back of the controller. The scoreboard fires up. There's no other power. It's, it's apparently, because of the solar part of it, literally a couple of bucks a year that it costs to power. The, those scoreboards, which is really cool. I don't know about charging the battery pack, but um, it's minimal compared to the old school where that would be connected to electricity the whole, um, the whole time. Um, so the ultimate problem that, we came, that, that came out of all of this, everything was all great, till we had our first rainy day. And uh, then it was like I'm reading the manual on the controller and it says, do not in any way get this thing wet because it may not function uh, anymore. And so we're in a pouring rainy day. And, and so the discussion started bouncing around with some of the coaches and this was the first generation of the iLab um, upstairs. And right away we were like, yeah, Tim, let's get a student to build something that will cover these controllers um, to keep them from, uh, from getting wet. So Joe Todd, those of you who remember Joe Todd a few years ago, um, jumped on this, this problem. Um, it took him, this was the ongoing joke, uh, over a year <laughs> before we ever saw a pro, and I kept asking him, Joe, what's it, oh, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, I got it, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Finally, after about a year, uh, Joe arrived with something that might look like an ups upside down version of, of a plastic. He had glued together uh, plexiglass with about 10 pounds worth of hot glue. A total mess all the way around the thing. And he had come and measured the controller and all this stuff. This is the, this is Joe Todd working on the prototype measurement. We have searched and searched and searched. Um, he finally came with the, the, the unit for me. It went over the controller um, and the battery pack 
but it had no room for you to put your hands in to actually change the scoreboard or do anything with it. So the concept was there, the execution, um, and it was a mess. There was so much glue on it, you couldn't even see through the glass hardly. It was like, it was, it was a total mess. But you know, I, we patted Joe on the back. We were like, great, thanks a lot. I think Bob chucked it out um, after, because we couldn't use it at all. And so my uh, beautiful punt from that idea was to go to Staples or wherever and buy a plastic Rubbermaid container, which the first evolution of one was just one with a regular plastic top on it, and that leaked. The second one comes here, what you see has a rubber gasket that goes around, which I didn't even know you could buy. Um, much better, has little seal handles on the side, very watertight, works great, except that, next slide, you gotta open and close it to maneuver the scoreboard. And depending on the sport, soccer, very easy. On, close the lid, and you don't touch the thing. That The referees even take the clock with two minutes to go in each half on the field, and you only have to reach in there for the occasional goal to, to go plus one or plus minus. So beautiful, but in a lacrosse game, different variations of our lacrosse teams play stop time where you're constantly in and out and in and out um, and opening and closing the lid. If it's pouring, the thing is getting wet. So concept wasn't working so well. So started talking about when I came in here for the beginning of this, it was like, it was like we we're gonna solve the Joe Todd problem and I'm gonna create a container, some sort of device that will cover these things and make them work um, really well. And I'll get to use some cutting thing and we'll cut plexiglass and we'll, we'll glue it better than Joe Todd and everything else. And started talking to Kurt about this and he was like, that's all great and you can learn that technology. And I did learn some of that technology, but what if there was an app on our phone that could run the scoreboard. Oh, okay. Whole nother concept where you could be standing under an umbrella or in a plastic bag or whatever and be able to run the scoreboard. Because sometimes we have a kid running the scoreboard, sometimes in a red and gray JDB <coughs> lacrosse game, it's a coach that, that might be doing it. And if they're just standing there with an umbrella on a rainy day from their phone, easy. So research started on that, started looking around to see if there was an app for such a thing. And there is not. And that went through all the way to, to calling up the Datronics, which makes our scoreboard in our, in our app. It's also a blog that they use. I got on the blog and started blogging with people and seeing if anybody had the same problem. Does anybody have a result? There is no app. It's a proprietary sort of uh, technology. They don't want you to be able to buy an app and run their scoreboard. They want you to buy, switch, no, not yet, back, go back, keep going back. They want you to buy that, which we did. There was no discussion of any other concept when we bought these scoreboards. $3,000 a piece for <coughs> one of those units, and we have two of them, because you've got two games going on at, at a time. So, no app for your phone. Okay, now we're back to Pete trying to build some plexiglass thing that will be better than this mousetrap. And in all of that research and talking with the 1-800-HELP-DECTRONICS guy um, in there, they now make a handheld device that corresponds to our scoreboard that's probably bigger than your phone, maybe the size of the biggest iPhone they make kind of thing which is that right there. So on a rainy day versus hauling out the big thing in the contraption and everything else, we can bring out a handheld device, which costs $400 versus $3,000. Is it wireless? Um, and it is wireless. Uh. So it has rechargeable batteries in it that you, you know, bring it back in and plug um, in it last. It connects, it will connect directly to the big scoreboard same wireless technology that is coming off of the other one um, without the what? It has, it comes with a, a case that goes over it with a, with a plastic uh, front 
to it. So you know, it's covered on all the sides, but exposes so that you can push the buttons through the plastic um, kind of thing. Even if it didn't come with that case, we used to have sort of the same device with our football field, and we took a Ziploc bag and put it over the thing, and you could see through the Ziploc bag and, and keep it dry, because that was the only way that's, that, you know, 10 years ago, you know, so some technologies come back around to the same thing. So, uh, with a school credit card, this has been ordered. Um, and we, we own it. Solving world problems. Solving world problems in real time. First world the, problems. See, look at the rest of you, again, they think built here, you know, by today. <laughs> um, but I only bought one because I want to make sure that it, it is solving the problem and working for 450 before I buy the second one and go down that road for the other for the other field. So we will be as cutting edge as you can get in being able to deal with our scoreboards. Um, not quite saving the world, but we're saving one game at a time here. So there you go. Next you gotta get Scott to develop